Kandao, or Kandao, I say them Kandao, they sent me another cool camera. This is a really high-end consumer camera. I'd call it almost bordering on professional. These guys make professional cameras, like actually professional cameras for professional use. This one here is something that it would be affordable for consumers, however. Um, you know, you're getting the quality of a professional camera, a really professional camera, but you're not spending an absolute fortune on it. So that's kind of the idea here. Uh, so you get your cool little selfie stick. It's gonna be nice. 120, 120 centimeters, that's extremely long. Well, that's like, that's very, very long. For Americans, that's like four feet or something, maybe longer. Uh, extra battery. KuCam. 3 360 action camera. So the uh, kind of cool part of this is it's a 360 there you go 360 degree camera so you can capture a video in the back and the front. So if you hold it up in the air you can capture a 360 degree scene. I saw this at CES 2024 in Las Vegas. They showed me a uh, demo of it. It's pretty cool. Um, some of these yeah, I was going to say some of these use professionals, you know, like action sports kind of things, cool stuff to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to be honest. So let's look at some of the features that it has dual one and 1.5 inch sensors. That's a big sensor actually. 4K 60 FPS video, which is fantastic. That's what I record in. Super steady, so it'll have some kind of uh, steady shot. Uh, 10 meter water resistant or waterproof, probably water resistant 10 meters. Got some warranty stuff, carrying case. You can put your stick in there obviously. Come out the bottom, so it's not going to interfere. Get our plastic wrap. Looks nice. So the material's really nice. That's a metal material there, metal all the way around. It's got the, um, you know, a lot of those action cameras have kind of gaskets around here to keep them waterproof or highly water resistant. Your inputs there, USB-C for charging purposes and probably data. Uh, the SD card goes in there. It's, looks good. Okay. So you can change your settings in here, 4K 30, 4K 60, 5.7K 30, holy smokes. I guess for cinematic stuff, that'd be pretty sweet. Uh, you have other settings in here, brightness. I think I just, yeah, it turns the brightness up and down. I'm gonna be going outside, so let's turn it up a bit. Super bright out. Uh, flip around, lock, we're not gonna do that. Volume, we'll leave that default. I don't remember what that is. Oh, indicator, okay. That's a recording indicator down there. Uh, uh, no media, obviously I deleted it from the other camera. That's your manual settings. It's down, to, oh yeah, so that's that there. Uh, this is the lock screen, just locks it on, locks it off, locks it on, save battery. Uh, this is the flip camera, you're gonna see me. Hello, right, because there's a camera on that side and there's a camera on that side. So this is the camera here and then there's a camera on the back side of it, right? I think that's the primary shooter there, but this is still a very high, uh, high quality camera. Okay, so it's a different app for this one. Uh, I guess the other one was an older one. So KuCam, KuCam 3 app. We're getting that, it's working. Uh, so basically just connected and then it said uh, app control here. So now I can use my phone to see what the camera is seeing. And we get some lanyard. I guess in case you drop the selfie stick, which you don't wanna do with the camera on it. Okay, so I've messed around with it a bit actually. I filmed the whole portion, but uh, let's come back and actually look at this stuff now that I have an opinion. Uh, the selfie stick here is actually really nice. It's very long, like whatever, uh, you know, one and a half meters, extremely long. It's really nice. It's got all metal, right? It's got this metal kind of, um, I don't know this, but this is like this cross, cross hatching kind of here, all very nice. This is all metal, very good quality. It feels nice and rugged. Very nice. This is a rubbery material here, very soft. Doesn't feel gross though. Very, very nice. Uh, so this is a very nice kind of like selfie stick thing. So okay, and you can see that there. Uh, we're at about half battery. Uh, I, didn't, I only charged it up one more bar than that. It was never full. I only charged it up to, I guess, 75% or so. And I was out filming for, I don't know, it's probably about 45 minutes, half an hour, something like that. Just taking shots and that. So the battery seems to be pretty good. But uh, yeah, that's the app there. So what you do is you come in here, you connect your phone to it. Uh, I've already done this. Camera's powered on. Dun, 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 dun. You can see the preview on the one side. You can't see the other camera, so I can't see the camera that's facing me on the actual device. Uh, so you can see that there. You know, there's different modes in here. So, so uh, when you go into the app, this kills off, right? It just kind of goes to like app control, so that you're not, you're not wasting your battery, basically. 
yeah, so you can see that there, that's straight shot. So single camera, the higher resolution camera there, plus this button here. Uh, right, so you can see the different modes here. So that's just uh, standard, right? Very nice. Go into that one there. It's a wider shot, all right? So it's only using one of the lenses, not the one that's facing me, but it's using the whole camera, right? You can see that there. Uh, so you get a nice kind of, all right, there's a server that I'm testing right now. Messy desk, very nice. Press that again, now it's in using both of them, so that's the one for me, all right? That's the one facing me. That's that one there, you can see that there. Right, now you can do the cool kind of globe shots that people do. Right, you flip it on the, on the thing, you can see the little globe thing there. And then that's kind of a pano. So it's gonna basically stitch it in and make a 360 degree shot. And you can see that there. All right, all the way around. That's the stitch point right there, right in the middle, obviously, all the way around. Go back to the standard shot just so you can see what you can do here. So there's 4K 60, 5.7K, you get to 30. Right, so you go like that, it'll go on to 30, 4K 60, 4K 30, whatever you want. Uh, there's effects in here, pro color, standard. You can go in here, auto white balance, or you can custom. So you can do these things on the fly on the app, very nice. That looks all good there. Whoa, what, you can, holy smokes, I didn't know you could do that. I guess because it's shooting the whole scene, right? So you can kind of do something like that. That's, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that. There we go. Oh, wow. That's super cool. Here's me. Hello. Hello. Isn't that cool? The fact that you can do that, that's pretty freaking cool. And that's in the globy mode. So you could set this thing, right? You can play with that, all kinds of stuff you can do. But I mean, that's, <laughs> you can do that outside. Uh, this is the panel, so there's nothing to really change with it here. Get really, really nice shots. So it's a full dedicated, you know, camera here. This is pretty high quality stuff. Oh, you can do different shutter speeds here, right? So if you wanna get like a long shot, okay. More stuff, so you have auto and video, obviously. Uh, loop recording, so it's just going to keep recording. I don't know, would you do that? Like maybe if you're driving or something? Time lapse. Preview is not supported by the current shooting mode. So you just basically, it'll just keep taking pictures. Start shooting. What? Shooting with lens one. Oh, cool. And then it kind of sets up a little uh, shot of me taking pictures. And then of course you can come in here, you can look at your pictures, your albums, all that kind of stuff. Very nice, look at my albums, some of the stuff that I've shot today. That's all photos. Took some photos, right? At home, this is, I guess, some, some tutorial. Teach you how to use the phone. The app looks pretty useful. Teaches you how to use it and that. So you can come in here and say, first use, connect to iPhone. Upgrading firmware, I've already done that. How to create a hyperlapse video. Uh, how to vid shoot and, yeah, let's just see what they got here. Oh, this. Hello and welcome. My name is Bob, and in the world of Suzuki, also known normally as Classic Suzuki. So they have like a full guide built into the app too. That's super cool. I am out walking my dogs right now. It is extremely hot, but it's cooled down. The sun has dropped. It's no longer 40 degrees pre-humidity here in Canada, in Calgary. I'm reviewing something, the Koo Cam by Ken Dow. They sent this to me hmm, probably in the late spring or so, but uh, I wanted to record it when we had beautiful scenery here, lots of green and that. Unfortunately, it got incredibly hot so i just decided you know what i'm gonna come out in the evening and record it okay here's the first filming location under a canopy all right let's extend it up a bit
And just for some comparison, here's just my phone. So that you know what we're looking at on a, just a standard phone camera. Here's the 360 top down globe thing. Are you good boy? Okay, so this is the raw files that come from the KuCam here. You can see if I open them up, they look kind of weird, right? So you come in here, for example, this is a video, right? You can literally see the two lenses. Here's another one. Looks kind of strange, right? Photos, same idea. And just as an example, here's one here. Right. So what you need to do is you need to download this right here. Cam Studio. Just a very basic looking software to start here. We come like this. We just bring in one. We'll just bring in a photo. So you can see there's two rings there. Bring it in like that. It's going to ask if you want to merge it. And look at that. It turns it into a single image. Export it. Boom. Done. That's for an image, of course. Video takes a little longer, but I've already done one video. So you can see that's that grass walking one there. I think it was this one here. You can see how funny this looks, right? Uh, I just basically dragged it in, hit export, and this is what we get. The last one of the trees here. You can see there's two images there. Okay. Bring that in there. Yeah, and you can go like that. See that? You can actually play with the image. So you can just export it as it is right now. All right, and go through it like that, play it like that. Like play with it. All right, say we want it like that there. All right, so it actually works as an editing tool as well. Look at me there. All right, big brain, chat, big brain, chat. So you can basically you know, go through here and fix up these files as you want. You can just leave them default or whatever. Uh, but, you know, you're going to want to come in here. You want to fix these up a little bit here. You can still use your editing app, right? You can still use your editing app after the fact, right? I'm going to end up coming back and using my editing app after I've done that. But I do want to get these cleaned up. It's a nice, cool one walking up a set of stairs, right? You can see it's going to warp the image, but you can see here, right? How freaking cool is that? It's just generally extremely cool. Export it. Uh, you can rename it. You can change different settings here, right? Resolution. That's very high resolution. Drop down, actually, to be honest. Uh, click that there. And uh, it takes a couple minutes, whatever, to go through. So what do I think about the KuCam 3 here? I am no professional photographer. I am no professional videographer. I'm also not an action outdoor adventure kind of person. Um, so, you know, when I went into this, uh, they said, you know, can we send you this? You can do a review. I was, at first I was thinking, I use cameras for YouTube. I do shots. I do take pictures on that too, but I'm no professional, right? And my, my channel is not focused specifically on camera work. It's not focused specifically on videos and action and all that kind of stuff, but I do focus on tech. Uh, so my first thoughts of this is this thing is very high quality. The actual build quality is superb. I've owned some GoPros on that in the past. I've used them for shooting actually part of my channel and I've just messed around with them. And uh, this is very rugged like that. It's a very, very rugged kind of build here. You know, it gives me confidence that this is going to be something that 
it's not just going to break, right? Like if you just if it falls over, it's not just going to shatter or anything like that. So that's really nice. Uh, the build quality does seem very, very good. Uh, the actual software on it seems quite good. The navigating through the menus here is very good. Navigating on your phone with the actual app is really nice, actually. It's super snappy. Like there's no real issues here. There's If you press and you go to a new setting, it does take like a second or so. Like here it's connecting. Hey, there it goes, done, right? It just takes a second or so to connect. Everything's really kind of pretty smooth with the app here. Uh, you know, it only takes basically a moment to get connected and then you switch to another mode and it's good to go. Going to the settings and that's super quick. Uh, basically, if you hit record, it takes about one second, maybe a second and a half, then it starts recording. So there's like that lag, but it's not laggy. It's just like an input latency before the camera starts doing something. Uh, very good. Navigating the app is super easy. So, I mean, that's really, really nice. Um, so the actual, you know, interfacing with the app is quite effective, quite easy for like beginners. I literally went into this blind. It de depending on the product that I'm reviewing, I like to go into it looking at the product from the eyes of the user. So if I'm doing certain things like, you know, GPU testing or something or game testing, you know, that's kind of an expertise area of mine. So I can go in there and just test them, tell you what I'm finding, show you what I'm finding. But if I'm testing user products, like consumer goods, it has to be something that potentially, you know, a wide audience can go into. If you go into this product as like a professional camera user, you're going to be super comfortable with it. You're going to be able to go through all the settings, mess around with it, get this thing tuned exactly as you want it to be, and you're going to have a great time with it. For someone like me, who, you know, I use cameras every day, filming for YouTube, I take videos all the time, I take pictures all the time, I'm filming on an action camera right now, uh, just a little bit of a different thing, not like a rugged action camera by any means, but I, you know, I mess around with these things, so I'm not a noob or like a new user, I'd say, but I'm certainly not a professional, not even close. There are channels out there who are vastly more advanced than me when it comes to this type of tech. So I wanted to look at it as someone who is relatively comfortable with a product like this. I also wanted to look at it as someone who maybe isn't so comfortable with it, and also how would it appeal to someone who's professional. I think it crosses all of those boundaries really well. Being able to go into the app, connecting your phone, following the directions, going in there, and then just basically following right through those tutorials, I think is very useful. The fact that the app actually has tutorials on it, I think is very useful, right? You can go through these tutorials, really learn how to use the phone, really learn how to use the camera on your phone, really useful actually. And then all the navigation is super intuitive. So they've obviously tuned this, like they've had people use the product, right? Not just the camera, use the app product, go through here and actually get some experience with the app, see what's user friendly, what's user unfriendly, and get an idea of how to make this a really streamlined process. I think it's actually very effective. Uh, so that's, you know, the user experience is really nice actually. Like if you throw the camera, you turn the camera on, you connect to your phone, you go out and you prick the setting that you want and you just start recording and you're good. Uh, and the actual footage is quite good. Like the cameras are really high quality on this. Uh, Ken Dow, generally speaking, is known for very high quality products and kind of professional level stuff. So, I mean, if you don't know who they are, you're just looking into them, these aren't some like unknown brand. It could just be that you're not like in that field specifically. Like I didn't meet this company and be like, I know exactly everything about you because I'm not a camera, like a professional photographer professional videographer. But when I met with them at CES, I was like, okay, these guys are very serious. I went home, I actually did a ton of research and they reached out to me to do the first review and the second one here. Uh, they're a very, very legit company, they make very good products and the reviews of everything I've seen are quite solid. But going into this as kind of like a noob type product, I think this thing is super cool. So someone's gonna pick this up. Maybe you just wanna start like a vlogging channel, like a professional. You wanna use it as like an amateur or professional type camera for events go to a wedding, something like that, set this up. You can get a nice 360 degree kind of setup. This is something that, this is an affordable product, something that a consumer would buy, right? This is not something that necessarily you have to be a business and write it off as like a $50,000 business expense for your up and coming videography uh, business, right? This is something that you can do that. You could use this as a professional. You could have this as a foundation of a business. Honestly, you could, and you'd be fine. Uh, or you can buy it as just a consumer, right? Someone like me wants some cool tech, wants to take cool videos, pick something like this up, and now all of a sudden you've got a really powerful camera that you can use for a lot of different events. So that's the camera there. If you're thinking that it's gonna be overwhelming as a you know someone going into this, you're not necessarily a videographer, not a tech person, I can assure you it's very easy to use. And to be honest, for what you're buying into it, the price is pretty fair. Like I thought that these things would cost exponentially more than this thing actually costs. So if you're looking for something that's affordable, high quality, easy to use, and also produces high quality content, this one seems like a pretty good product to be honest.